Everybody loves the American campfire. Don't you hear it calling your name? Everybody loves the American campfire. Don't you hear it calling your name? Everybody loves the American campfire. Go ahead and fan the flames. All right, so what do you think is going to happen next in the state? Are things on the upswing? Absolutely, uh, because of the the level and the consistency of treachery and oath violating by my government, where the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the most powerful military leader in America, actually has a cozy relationship with the communist Chinese military, and he actually called him on tape and said, "If anything, if we, if my government plans anything against you, I'll call you and warn you." So that's just one example of I could keep you here with thousands of them, the treason, the dishonesty, the cultivation of the worst violent crime wave ever by letting rapists and murderers and child molesters and carjackers and home invaders, they're letting them out in all the Democrat cities. Perfect. Because now people who weren't involved until their uncle got bludgeoned to death for his Buick or until Aunt Edna got raped and hit with a baseball bat by a guy that the Democrat DA let out after beating people with baseball bats. By the way, if you beat somebody with a baseball bat, I guarantee if you're let out of the cage, you're going to beat somebody again with a baseball bat. That's not a hunch. That's not a Ted Nugent wild assumption. It's proven by the, all the, uh, the crime reports. My point being is that this is a glorious time in America because the devil is so stupid and so cocky that he is in the open in a public arena offending good people every hour of every day. And so, yes, there is a huge wake up happening in America. We are going to kick these Democrat liberal Marxist ass in the midterms. We are finally realizing that when you take the oath to the Constitution, the very foundation of this greatest quality of life in the history of the world, I'm convinced, until the Democrats created feces and needles, homeless capitals. <laughs> <laughs> It's hysterical. You know, uh, there wouldn't have been a one flew over the cuckoo's nest episode quite stupid as this one. So it's waking people up and they're starting to realize, my God, these uh, Democrats, they they're dishonest as hell. Their policies are destroying everything they touch. They're creating violent crime waves. They're importing jihadists through our southern border. They're using our tax dollars to fly them all over the country and put them in our neighborhoods without warning us. Uh, 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 an illegal invader in America can get on a plane using their arrest warrant as ID. I mean, again, I could go on and on. When you question my wide stroke of a wide brush, it's because you're not paying attention. Fortunately, I am paying attention. And so are a lot of Americans. And when you realize that the Democrats have their dream, their dream is gun free zones. They have eliminated by by signs and, and documents that these areas are gun-free zones. And in every instance where the most innocent lives are lost, and again, the statistics are easy to find and irrefutable, where the most innocent lives are lost in every instance, it's in a Democrat dream of a gun-free zone because all the victims are unarmed and helpless by force and the evil people they keep letting out of their jail cells have a field day in gun-free zones. And here's the horror. These Democrats see that their gun-free zones are where the most innocent lives are lost. And then they go nuts trying to create more of them. Well, I, about gun control, I will say, having moved to New Zealand, they understand what, I mean, I'm not anti-gun per se, but I don't think everybody should have one. So no, nobody thinks everybody should have one. Well, we, we, it the seems like everyone should. Ha everyone does have one in the states. Whereas here, when they come, when you apply for a, a license for your gun, they actually come and visit you in your home and see how you live and talk to your friends and family and see if you're going to go off and shoot the neighbors next week. 
You know, yeah, well, and, you have you have a good time in New Zealand with that. You make sure that some man comes to your house and see if you qualify to defend yourself. I pity. I well, pity we don't. We, we don't. And have by the way, murders here. But, but and but but you're not paying attention, Marty. Where uh, all the, of our murders and all of our repeat crime happen is in Democrat-controlled urban areas where they keep letting out people who shoot each other in New Zealand. People respect each other. And I suspect if you shoot somebody in New Zealand, you will never be allowed to go shopping with the people again. Well, in America, <laughs> in America, they keep letting them out. They keep letting them out. They won't even prosecute them when they see them burning down buildings and shooting each other. There's a big difference between crime control and tool control. Well, in most areas where there's not the crime, there's not this engineer. I mean, I'm not going to say that the people of New Zealand are any better than the people in the United States. It's not just that they don't have the guns to go. And it's just if you have access instead to a, a knife or you're pummeling somebody, people still get pissed off at each other and do horrible things to each other. But the you know, we have very, very few shootings and murders here. Well, we you're have, again, some. 90, according to the FBI recent crime report, the FBI, unfortunately, I'm not trustworthy anymore, but we'll listen to their last crime report. All right. 98 percent. That's huge. That's, that's really close to 100 percent. 98 percent of violent crime, including firearms crime, are committed by people that have committed firearms crime and they keep letting them out. If they stopped letting them out, we would have fewer shootings than New Zealand in about I mean, four already, months. But you already have, I mean, the states already has more people in prison than pretty much any other country in the world. How can they, keep, are, I, what are you going to keep doing? Just lock everybody up? Well, here's, here's what really should happen. Everybody who wants to defend themselves should certainly have the God-given individual right to keep and bear arms to defend themselves. And instead of people being brainwashed that they should be unarmed and helpless, and I give you thousands of examples, that when someone comes and breaks in your house, that person should be shot dead. So he never breaks into someone's house again. When someone is about to rape that lady, she should fill him full of lead. So he's never able to rape anybody again. It's so simple. We have cultivated a subculture of violent crime mindset. And again, the term engineered recidivism, if we just kept them in jail. And again, the reason our, our prisons are overcrowded is because we keep sending the message. You can get away with it. You can get away with it. You can get away with it. Oh, you shot somebody, but you missed a vital organ. Well, we'll let you out. Go to the target practice range. and Maybe you'll be a better shot next time. I don't want the guy to be a better shot. I either want the bad guy dead or in a cage for the rest of his life. I don't care how uncomfortable it is. I don't care how crowded it is. We need to, we need to celebrate good people and eliminate evil people. And a lot of people, well, who's make that judgment? I'll be glad to. I'll uh, be well, glad that, that to. is a problem. <laughs> if somebody, if somebody problem. stabs somebody, that would be the evil guy. Well, right, he might right. have a day. I don't really give a rat's ass if he had a bad day. I know a lot of people and I don't know anybody that's willing to stab somebody. That would be an evil person. We coddle criminals. We engineer recidivism, and it has nothing to do with access to an SUV or an access to a knife or a pipe bomb or a fist. Do you know that more crimes and more injuries and more murders take place in America with things other than firearms? I'm sure that's the case. But here's a surprise for you, maybe. In New Zealand, uh, if somebody breaks into your house and you grab them and beat them, you will go to court and they will charge you with assault. They usually well, you, 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 have a nice, you have a nice time in New Zealand. You can move <laughs> to Chicago and the same thing would happen. All right. But I'm but, just saying, know, that's, it's that's just the, saying, the acceptance of using violence like that to deal with problems is just not an ex, is not OK. You know, I think it I think it I think it's way better than OK. I think if somebody breaks in your house, you should be able to cut them in half. Well, uh, we'll have to disagree with that one. <laughs> well, the next time someone breaks in your house, I wish you the best of luck. Right. OK, well, fortunately, that hasn't happened. <laughs> well, but, but, but again, it's not about you, Marty. Although I will say when I lived in the States, I lived, it's in Rochester, about the I lived in Rochester, New York, right in the inner city. And, you know, there was a crack house right across the street from me. I'd see I'd hear gunshots all the time. 
I saw a guy walking around with a rifle back and forth. You know, I had to get the kids indoors. I mean, it was insane. Why it would I want to live like that? You don't, you don't, but I got to tell you, you know, you're talking to Ted Nugent and I am a, I'm an uppity guy. I didn't invent the middle <laughs> finger, but I have perfected it. Um, and I'm looking out on my Serengeti. We live in central Texas and I work with the sheriff department. I've been a sheriff deputy in Michigan for the last 39 years. I've conducted federal raids and I've arrested rapists and murderers and stabbers and carjackers. So I've been in the belly of the beast because I think that good should dedicate themselves against evil. All and right. if you if you hold a gun to a lady's head to take her Buick, I think that lady should have shot you. But, but since she was convinced not to be able to defend herself, she's either dead or traumatized. And the bad guy got her Buick. My point is, I've been in the belly of that beast. And you're talking to a guy that is so positive, so loving, so <laughs> peaceful. I have beautiful grandchildren. I just hugged my wife to the point where once again, she went, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I snuggle. I actually spoon my dogs. I went out this morning and I checked my trap line. I trapped fox and coyotes and bobcats and coons and possums and skunks to mitigate disease spread and keep the wild grounds healthy and balanced. So I am the most loving guy you'll ever meet. But I so love life that when I see a rabid dog, I'm going to shoot him. That's not violent. That's securing sure. peace. No, no, of course. Securing healthy conditions. So don't be very careful that a lot of these liberal, and I don't think you're a liberal, I don't know you that well, um, <laughs> they'll, they'll go, Nugent thinks violence is the answer. Well, here's one for you. You Pearl Harbor me, I Nagasaki you. People go, well, that's outrageous. Yes, it is outrageous, because if you Pearl Harbor me, I will Nagasaki you. This is perfect. It's called the ballet of good over evil. And sometimes when old Yeller brings you a, your slippers in the newspaper, you give him a smooch and a biscuit. But when old Yeller foams at the mouth, <laughs> you got to cut him down. That's life. It's how life works. All your chickens are dead that you ate. All your leather cows are dead. All the animals that live where your home now exist, you, you paid someone to slaughter every one of them. And that's good. That's fine because you have a right to live and nature can move over as long as we keep balance and we maximize not only our habitat, but the habitat of wildlife, because that's where quality air, soil, and water comes from. And I'm just a guitar player, and I figured that out all by myself. <laughs> yeah, I never went to college. I was too busy learning stuff. And being clean and sober for 73 years, my radar picks up accurate information. So I hope you're enjoying this dialogue, I, even though absolutely. I turned it into a monologue. But it's because <laughs> I'm passionate about my freedom. Right. I'm passionate about my right to defend myself. And if my court system is going to so fail me that I might run into a stabber or a shooter or a carjacker, shooting guns is fun. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Now, to wrap things up, I just got to ask you, if you if you ran into this guy today, what would you say to him? I'd probably give him a big smooch right in the lips and go, you are a wild son of a bitch. I love your attitude, young man. <laughs> well, here's a great, here's the best answer to that. My drummer, Jason Hartle, is just amazing. I hope everybody in New Zealand picks up our, our Ted Nugent Detroit muscle. Marty, it's the real McCoy. All right. We're so proud, but we were jamming. We were playing these outrageous, high-energy, fun, throttling songs. And everybody's working up a sweat and everybody's going, my God, that was outrageous. Where'd you go to the F sharp? Where'd you come up with that? And I didn't. I said, Greg, F sharp. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this outrageous jam session. But Jason, he's over there sweating. He goes, God damn. If the 20 year old Ted Nugent showed up today, you'd kick his ass. <laughs> so, so being clean and sober for 73 years and celebrating good. Right. Being the best that you can be, surrounding myself with the best that they can be, which describes everybody. You've dealt with Linda, you, my management, Doug, my wife, my children, my sons, my daughters, my grandkids, my brother, my sister, my farming buddies, my hunting buddies. It, you'd think, what well, you wouldn't think, if you followed me around for any period of time, you'd go, that's a perfect life.
All right. There Those you go. Positive. We do charity work for all these terminally ill children. We do charity work for wildlife habitat. We do charity work for all these soldiers and sailors and airmen and Marines families who sacrifice for our American dream. And I'm surrounded by people that are so generous and so giving. We just calculated. I'm not bragging because it's really not me. But we just <laughs> calculated. I do an assembly line every day. And I sign guitars and bows and arrows and guns and bullets and, 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 and skulls. I, I'm the only guy that signs skulls to raise money for charity. I, I do an assembly line every day, including th these hats. If people, I think even in, we've got a few people in New Zealand that have. Oh, there you go. Yeah. At TedNugent.com, I autograph these hats and we donate all these different things to the. We have calculated that Ted Nugent's signature, just the old greasy goofball guitar player from Detroit, by signing this assembly line of weaponry, <laughs> all this neat stuff. I have all these Ted Nugent zebra arrows, and I'll oh, yeah. sign them, <laughs> and I'll, I'll donate them, and people will pay a thousand bucks for an arrow. Oh, boy. It's because they're generous and they care, right. and they're ripped. <laughs> but we calculated in excess of $27 million I have raised for really good charities. And I, all I did was sign stuff. I mean, I do a lot. I mean, if I jacked off, I'd pull my dick clean off. This hand just never stops. Um, I don't know if you can use that on this podcast. But <laughs> well, I think we can. <laughs> it's rather telling. Um, the point is, is that I'm just, I'm, I try to be a nice guy. Right. And I succeed at being a nice guy, which is why families with terminally ill children, Marty, they call me and their little boys and girls before they die want to go hunting with Ted Nugent. I must have done something right. And so, yeah, people, Nugent's violent. He thinks violence is there. No, no, I, I'm so sweet. I'm like Mother Teresa with a machine gun. Everybody there relax. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, I'm sharing that with you now okay. because my, my passion uh, tends to cause easygoing people much confusion because I'm high energy. And that's why my music is so much fun. And that's yep. probably why you wanted to do an interview with me. That's true. Um, and when it comes right down to it, I'm just a guy who wants to raise a family in the asset column. I want to, I am in the asset column for environmental upgrade. The, I've planted tens of thousands of trees over my lifetime. Um, I manage wild ground for maximum biodiversity and clean air, soil, and water production. Um, so people can, ah, he's, he's a right-wing Nazi. Whatever. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just a guitar player who's conscientious, hardworking, high high energy and i thank god every day for the gift of life so i'm going to use it to the best of my ability including sharing that with you way over there in new zealand and i love my new zealand friends yeah. my new zealand hunting friends and if people in new zealand thinks that another man can determine whether they have the right to defend themselves or keep them bare arms i will pray for those people and i'm glad that you're happy with the conditions you live in but for me to even consider that another man could possibly have control or authority over my individual decisions, whether it's keeping and bearing arms or playing loud music or telling elected officials to kiss my ass. If that man exists, I would like to meet him because I would set him straight in a <laughs> short period of time. All righty. Because guess who's in charge of my life? me uh, and, and mrs nugent <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you very much for that that was uh, enlightening to say the least